to New York is one of the best decisions I've ever made. And it really started there. It really started there. Like after I did that, I was like, oh, I can do anything. I can do anything. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shanika and this is part two of my journey. Now in this video, I'm gonna go back, like we're gonna go back down memory lane, all right? We're gonna talk about how it all began, where it all started from, who I am, how did this come to be? What led me to the decision to ultimately walk away from the bureau and fully walk in my purpose and kind of journey through the time to get to the present day. Now, if you didn't see part one, I recommend you go and watch part one first and then come back and watch part two so that it'll all kind of make sense, right? Now, listen, y'all, if you enjoyed the video, please give me some feedback. Let me know what you're thinking. You know, drop a comment, hit the like button, show some love. And I appreciate y'all because all of this that is happening in my life right now is ultimately because of God. I had no idea I would be at this point in my life. I had no idea that I would be making these types of decisions at this point in my life. I really just want to do what God tells me to do. I want to be obedient and I'm going to talk about the importance of obedience in a whole nother video because God has really been speaking to me. He has been showing me um, just through other believers on the importance of obedience and how that can bless not only your life but the lives of so many that will be or already are connected to you. Now that that's out of the way, <laughs> let's get into the meat of my story. So I was born in South Carolina. I am a Southern girl. I was born in a small city called Darlington, Darlington, South Carolina. And I had to go back and do a little bit of research because I'm like, how big is Darlington? The population was around 6,000. So it's small. Now I was born there, but I lived in Hartsville, South Carolina. I lived in Hartsville up until the age of seven and then my parents they moved myself and my brother and my sister to Richmond Virginia now I am the youngest of three so I'm the baby of the family but um, my sister you know we're four years apart and then my brother we are two years apart so my parents had us close together so we are really really close um, we have a great relationship my family is very close-knit as a whole, even outside of my immediate family, like my family as a whole, we're just very close and I just love that. I just thank God for my parents because they really stepped out on faith and executed that faith and moved us to Richmond, Virginia. So I was raised in Richmond, lived there until I, I moved on to college and I truly am grateful for my parents for doing that because that was their obedience when God told them to do it. They did it. They didn't have everything figured out. They didn't have all the money I'm sure that they needed at the time, but they trusted God and they moved forward. And I'll speak more about my family and just how they supported me um, in another video. But I just thank God that they were obedient and they made that decision to move us and, and open us up to more opportunities and resources for us to be able to then elevate, right? And do better to do better with our lives, to give us a chance to make better decisions and be in a better environment where we would be able to grow and learn and just move forward and, and do the things that God would later call us to do in our lives. So shout out to mom and dad, amazing. So my parents raised us in Richmond. We lived there the, the entire time. I then go on to college. I went to Liberty University. I studied criminal justice with a minor in psychology. I graduated from there in 2010. And then we fast forward to, I'm done with college. What am I gonna do? At the time I stayed in Lynchburg for at least a year after I graduated just working there. I was working at a, an assistant living residential for the elderly. I enjoyed that job, that job was great. Um, worked with some amazing people there. And so I, I continued working there after I graduated from college while I figured out what I was gonna do, right? I got this degree, I need to do something with it. I need to figure out my life. One thing that I, I, I wanna share is that I have family in New York and we will often go and visit our family in New York, you know, throughout the year. And anytime we would go, I was just like, oh, I'm gonna move here one day. I love it here. I will always say that. And my family was like, New York, girl, what you gonna do in New York? And you country girl, what you gonna do in New York? You know, we just joking about it but I was so serious about it. I loved everything about New York and I, I meant it every time I said it, like I'm gonna move to New York one day. And I would say it and I would believe it. And every time I went there, I was just like, oh, I love it here. I can't wait until I get old enough to move here. And then, you know, fast forward to after college, I'm thinking about like, what am I gonna do? Where do I wanna go? You know, I didn't wanna necessarily stay in Lynchburg, not because I didn't like it there, but I just knew that 
that wasn't where I was gonna be planted outside of me graduating from college. So I had to figure it out. Right when I graduated, I began applying for any type of job that was related to criminal justice in any way that was in New York City. I was on Indeed.com and I think it was like Monster.com, whatever those search engines were at the time. But I was on there every day and I'm finding jobs and I'm, you know, my resume as basic as it could be, but I'm, you know, shooting out my resume to these emails for HR and filling out the applications online and, and just trying to lock in a career. I wanted to be in New York so badly that I was just applying. I was applying all throughout Manhattan. I was applying in Brooklyn. And then I would, you know, there were some spots in Queens. So one day I came across this position at a criminal court. They will pay like a stipend for you to do the work. You know, you get the experience and you do it for a year. And it would give you the, you know, you would get whatever said amount of the stipend to kind of survive on, but not like to like survive, survive, like you barely making it, especially in New York City. So, and it was under the Center for Court Innovation. I think they've changed the name now to Center for Justice Innovation. The reason why I applied, I was like, well, this is right in Manhattan. It was off of West 54th Street. So I'm like, this is right in Manhattan in the heart of it, not too far from Times Square. I know this area, you know, I've been in this area enough to kind of feel comfortable. So here we are. I applied June of 2011. When I applied, I'm like, okay, this starts in October, October 1, but I would have to be there the last week of September because we will have like our meet and greet on September 30th. And so I'm like, that's quick, but we're going to see what happened. You know, I was just such a I don't know, like, I'm just gonna see what happens type of person. I'm such a risk taker. I'm the type that's like, you know what, let's just see what happens. You know, like I'm I'm aware and conscious of my decisions, but when it comes to different opportunities and just being able to get all types of experience and things like that. And then I got the call that I would have an interview, I believe it's in July, it was in person. So of course I'm like, all right, I gotta get up to New York. Now I have been to New York on the Megabus before. So at that time, Megabus was popping. Like everybody was on Megabus. You get Megabus for like $7. So I'm like, okay, let me get my ticket so I can get to New York. Now at the time, one of my friends, he lived in Maryland. I knew I had to take the bus because at the time I was driving a, I think it was like a 98, 97 Saturn. It's my sister old green Saturn car. And I knew without a doubt, I was not driving that car from Lynchburg, Virginia to New York City because mm -mm. my car had a thing where when you put it in reverse, if you ever had a sound or maybe you experienced this, but you put it in reverse and then you have to wait for like two to three seconds to wait for the car to just like hop back. So it would do like this loud pop, you know, you hop back and then it was safe then to go on and continue in reverse. But I was not trusting that car to get me to New York safely and back to Virginia safely. I could drive to Maryland and then my friend, you know, if they're available, they can take me to get the bus. I took the bus from DC. So I go to Maryland, drive up to Maryland, and then I, you know, my friend, my, I think my bus left at like 7, 7, 7.30 in the morning. And so my friend got me to the bus and my interview was, I think, scheduled for one o'clock. I know for a fact, it had to be like one o'clock in the afternoon. So from Mar from DC, it was like a good four hour trip, you know, but I'm dressed in my, my, my dress. I had like this gray business type dress on because I was like, I gotta go dress because I don't know where I'm gonna change, right? So I go dressed, I get up there, I think I got in the area around 11, 12 o'clock. So of course I'm like, all right, let me get something to eat. Once I got off the bus, the bus dropped you off, I think at like 34th and 11th Ave or something like that. And mind you, I walked all the way up to 54th, 8th Avenue and uh, West 54th Street. So it's a little hike, but I'm like, whatever. Like, this is what I gotta do because I want it, I'm gonna do it. My parents had no idea that I was in New York, okay? They didn't even know that I had an interview in New York. So this is me being me, the risk taker that I am. I'm like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do it. I'll tell them later because I don't want them to like tell me no and you know, don't do it and like not discourage me, but just, you know, a parent's protection is like, what, you gonna do what? With who, what? New York, no. Anyway, get there, give me something to eat. I think I had grabbed something at the time from Wendy's or something, cause I wanted, what I wanted to do was get in the area and just be close by so that when it was time, I could go. I head over, you know, like around 12.45 or so, 12.40, go upstairs after they check me in, check my bags and everything, I go upstairs and you know set up for the interview so it was like a panel interview i think it was like three or four uh people on the panel and you go i went through the whole interview it was like maybe 
30 to 45 minutes or something like that. My bus was scheduled to leave, I believe, around 4.30, 5 o'clock. So I make my way back down to 34th and 11th Ave, get on the mega bus, back to Maryland. And once I got back to Maryland, I drove back to Lynchburg. So I did all of this in one day. And I was exhausted beyond explanation, right? I don't even know how I got home other than by the grace of God, obviously, but I, I didn't even know how I made it home. And they tell you, you'll hear something in a couple of weeks, you know, because this is a, this is like a pool of like, okay, we have a bunch of people that we're going to interview and then we, we will pick those who make it to the final, I guess, stage of the process, right? The final candidates to be selected after doing the second interview. So this is interview one, did that in person. With this program, they had like different courts throughout the city. The one that I was hoping that I would get would be in Midtown. So that's the one that I interviewed for. But when you interview, it was the understanding that you could be placed anywhere where the needs are, right? So I'm like, all right, well, we'll see what happens. Here we are, like a couple weeks later, get a phone call and they tell me, oh, you know, we just wanted to let you know, congratulations, you've been selected for the second interview, the second part of the interview. And they was like, but because we know that you live in Virginia, we don't want you to have to do all of that again. So we'll do a phone interview with you. I was like, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, because I was like, I'm not trying to have to do all of that again. Cause I know I wasn't gonna stay in New York. I didn't have money like that to, get a hotel or anything. And I didn't want to hit my family up because I didn't want my family to tell my parents. We fast forward and I think the interview, it was at the end of July. So we do the phone interview, get through it and they select me. You know, they tell me congratulations. We want you to be a part of the team. And so I'm like, okay. And what did I do? I accepted. I accepted. I accepted and I had nowhere to live. Mind you, I had to be there by the end of September, it is now almost August. It's the end of July. I had a little under 60 days to find somewhere to stay and move to New York. Mind blown. Like I don't even, y'all, I'm telling you, this has been me my entire life. And it really started there. It really started there. Like after I did that, I was like, oh, I can do anything. I can do anything. If I did that, I can do anything. Of course, I'm like, wow, I gotta tell my parents because I already said I, I got the job I said yes, I accepted the job, but I don't have nowhere to live. I don't got no place to stay. Like, where am I live at? I didn't have money like that. So here I am, I'm like, I gotta tell them, but let me just try to find somewhere. Let me kind of line it up so it looks nice. So it looks like I have like everything in order so they don't have to worry about, you know, me doing this, right? Me taking this big step without like their help, so to speak. So I'm looking up places and, you know, again, I'm comfortable with, Brooklyn and Manhattan because I had been in those areas and I felt like I had more knowledge there. So I'm looking in these areas. I'm looking up rooms, but y'all, I, I was looking in areas like Crown Heights, Bed-Stuy. What? I even think I looked in like, might've been Jamaica, Queens, but I was just like, oh, I just need to find a room. So I'm looking up rooms and I think just getting a room and I'm talking like just a room, right? Like where your bed and nothing else. I think that was like, I will find them for like five, $600. So I'm like, okay, I could probably make this work. Mind you y'all, the stipend that they was giving us was like a thousand dollars a month. $1,000 a month. What did I think I was gonna do with $1,000 a month in New York? So here I am, I'm like, all right, if they're giving me like a thousand dollars, right? Then I just need to have like a place for like five, 600 and then I should be good to live off the rest of that. And I'll just get another job and I should be, I should be good. Yeah, I'll be good. What? So I'm like, all right, five, 600, cool. I could work with that because I know I'm getting like a thousand dollars a month. So I'll be good to pay that. And then I'll just, you know, live off some, some, some bread, some PB and J, whatever, whatever it took. I was like, I'm going to get there. You know, me and my sister, and I think maybe my best friend, we went up there one weekend and we was just looking at places in Brooklyn. And when I tell y'all, I was like, I can't, I can't. I don't know if they call these like railroad homes, but it's like this long, narrow hallway. And then you have these rooms that, you know, are off the hallway. So maybe like a place with maybe three to four bedrooms. The thing is, which I didn't know when I was looking, is that you would have your own room, yes. You would have access to your own room, but you would share the bathroom and you would share the kitchen with the other uh, occupants. 
of said location. I wasn't about that life. I wasn't about that life. I knew immediately, I was like, this is not for me. Mind you, I'm in Best Diamond, Crown, he Crown Heights. I didn't know anything about those areas. I do now, and I'm sure, you know, now they're better, but back when I was looking, they weren't so great. Not for someone who didn't know, like, anything really about those areas. It wasn't a, a wise decision for me to be living in Best Diamond, Crown Heights. At that point, I'm like, all right, I gotta talk to my parents because I don't know what I'm gonna do. Fast forward. Get them on the phone, tell them everything. And they're like, you did what? You're doing, you're, you're going where? So I'm like, yeah, I accepted a position in New York. And they're like, you are 23 years old. What are you gonna do in New York City? What are you gonna do in New York City? You're 23. And I'm like, I'll be fine. Like, I know, but I, I wanna do this. Like, I already got it. I already said, yes, I have to go. They were not happy. My parents were not happy. Um, they were more disappointed. They weren't angry or anything. They were just disappointed that I kind of did this outside of them. But a part of me kind of felt like I had to do that because I feel like if I had told them what I was doing, then I probably would never have gone to New York at that time. I wouldn't say ever, but at the age of 23, I don't think it would have happened because they they were be too concerned for my safety. And I understand it's a big city, right? I'm 23 and so and I didn't know the city like I didn't have a lot of family in the city my family lived on the island so Long Island so it was just like who was I gonna really be able to have there that would kind of be like somebody that could care for me so I understand as a parent especially now as a parent and I have my son he's five you know and so I'm like I, I get it now but back then I'm like it's fine I'll be okay I'm good I'm 23 I got this no <laughs> So, you know, of course, my mom, she ends up calling my auntie in Long Island and she tells her everything that I've done. And my auntie is like, she's coming here. She doesn't tell her to stop looking for a place. She's coming here. She's going to stay here. She doesn't need to pay. She doesn't need to do anything. We got her. You know how much relief that gave my parents when when my auntie was just immediately like, oh, no, she come here. Don't worry about it. We got her. No, she doesn't need to look. She don't need to pay for no rent. She can stay here with us. And not only my parents, but when my mom called and told me that, y'all, I had to report in less than like three weeks at this point. Less than like three weeks. And so when my mom, like the fact that my auntie and my uncle, they were so um, willing to take me in at such a short period of time. We're talking like three, maybe four weeks max. And they didn't want any money from me. They didn't say I need to be on this, that, and the third. It was just like, it's okay. We got you. You know, we want you to come here and stay with us. That way you don't have to be out here just trying to figure it out. So, so grateful for that because had it not been for them, I don't know where I would have stayed. I don't know if I even could have went through with it, right? I would have probably had to pull out because I was not staying in those locations, those rooms that I saw. There is absolutely no, they were so tiny, tight. I didn't know who was gonna be staying around me. I'm like, I am not doing this. So thank God for a good family, um, a good support system, and just for parents who at the end of the day, even though they were disappointed in me and how I went about it, they they came through my mom didn't even ask it was just like my aunt was immediately like she can stay here don't worry about it we got her and so here we are y'all i'm going on to new york city moving to new york is one of the best decisions i've ever made and i'm gonna tell you why moving to new york ultimately pushed me it like propelled me to greater the opportunities in new york were and are endless still to this day but it depends on who you are as a person. And because I was so hungry, like I was young, I was eager, excited, ambitious, and I still am all of that. I don't know about the young part, it's like I'm young, but I was just ready for more, right? I had a desire, a deep desire for more. I knew that in order for me to really experience life on the level that I desired it, I had to get out of Lynchburg, Virginia. Not that anything is wrong with Lynchburg, Virginia, but because of where my mindset was and what I desired to do, I knew that it was bigger than where I had been for four or five years because I was there for school and then I stayed there for a year after. So I knew that it's like, okay, been here for five years. Like I gotta go. It's time for me to move on to something bigger. 
and was bigger than, you know, moving to New York City, right? So moving to New York was a complete culture shock, right? I, even though I had been there, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, like I had been on the subways, you know, I had been around in the city. And like I said, I spent a lot of time in Brooklyn, Long Island, Manhattan, but it was still a culture shock to actually like, this is now my home. Like I'm now living here. The good thing about it is though, that I lived on the island with my aunt and uncle. So I wasn't living in the thick of it, so to speak. I was able to step away from it. I was able to take a moment to, to like debrief and, and just have my, the calmness. Like the city is just always, always, the city always has something going on. I feel like every time I was in the city, I feel like I had to hustle. Like, I feel like, all right, what time is it? I need to hurry up because I need to get to this place. I got to get to this place on time. Oh, and then my train leaves at this. I always feel like I'm hustling. You just see everybody just like running and trying to catch the train and trying to catch the bus and trying to get a cab. It just feel like you just couldn't settle down. But I loved that when I was that young. I hated it, you know, a couple years ago. But I loved that when I was 23 years old because it's like, ooh, this is what life is. This is, you know, this is where, where all big dreams are made, you know, to come to reality. So I'm like, I need to find a second job. Stipend of $1,000 a month is not going to do anything for me. I applied at Madison Square Garden because I'm like, Madison Square Garden? Like, that would be a dream to work there. You, hear, you know, I used to hear so much about it, especially when I would go visit, you know, would ride past it. And I'm like, man. And I had never stepped foot in there prior to working there. So I applied there for a guest services representative. And I think now it's like a guest experience representative. And what's amazing about God is that the first week that I was in that position at Midtown Community Court, I got a call from Madison Square Garden for an interview. It's just amazing to me that it was all like coming together. I did the interview and I started Madison Square Garden October 8th officially. And I'm just like, wow. This is unreal to me. But I want to say it was in 2012 when I want to say maybe April. I had a friend back in Lynchburg who I went to church with um, and she randomly reached out to me because I hadn't spoken to her in a while. But she reached out by text and she was just like, hey, I hope all is well. She was like, listen, my sister who works for the FBI, they are recruiting for X position. And I was like, what FBI? And so she was like, you know, I'm just reaching out to some of my friends. She told me if I knew anyone, any good candidates to let her know. And I thought about you. And she was like, so if you're interested, make sure you send your resume over to this email address. Mind you, the internship was only for one year. So here we are, it's like March, April, and then she texts me that. It's just amazing how like God just sets things up like he puts things in place for you to not have to worry. He's like, I got you. If you just trust me, I got you. I sent over my resume and y'all, I get a, I get selected for an interview. I'm like, my resume, I don't have any experience. I know it's like entry level, but it's still the FBI. And I'm like, I don't have any, any experience. They called me. They called me for an interview. My interview was in June of 2012 in DC at headquarters. And my dad, because they did it based on my address. So I would still have my parents' like address as my permanent address. So my dad, you know, drove me up to DC to do the interview in June. Did the interview and uh, I was like, there's no way those people are calling me. They are not going to call me. I was like, I did horrible. I had never done an interview like that before, ever. It was a completely different style. So I was just like, oh well, at least I did it, got the experience behind it. Let me go on you know, with my life and figure out what's next. And I didn't wanna have to move back home. So I was like, man, although I was working at the garden at that time, I'm like, it's a part-time position and it's not something that would be sustainable for me to stay in such a big city. Even if I lived with my aunt and uncle, I don't think they would have had an issue with that, but it was still, I just felt like that wasn't what I was there for. Like, I wasn't just gonna work at Madison Square Garden part-time and just, you know, I got this whole degree. Like, I'm like, I gotta do something with it. Madison Square Garden was great. I'll talk about that in another video, but I had so much fun working at Madison Square Garden. I had to escort celebrities and, and meet so many different celebrities while I was there. So it was a great experience. After some time, literally like two weeks later after I had an interview, they called me and told me I was selected for the position. What? You know, I'm like, wait, what? I, me, I thought I bombed the interview. Apparently I didn't. And they called me. That's favor. 
I don't care what nobody says. That's favor from the Lord. That was favor because I did not know what I was saying to the answers to those interview questions. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So of course I'm excited. I call my parents. I tell them they're excited. It was just like an amazing feeling, right? And once I got word that, you know, I'm good to go, you know, I'm good to, you know, go to training that will start in December of 2012, you know, I was just like, yes, I made it. You know, everything's good. I passed my background. Now I'm really about to walk into like a new chapter of my life. This is amazing. You know, what I thought was going to be a success in this position, it did not. It did not turn out in my favor. And what I thought was for me at that time, God has something so much better, so much better. Essentially, that's what life is about, right? You move with purpose, of course. You move with a plan. You move with, you know, you, you set goals, but you have to be willing to fail. You have to be willing to, you know, do it afraid. You have to do it afraid. You have to um, trust that God will carry you, that God will lead you and God, God will guide you essentially to where you need to be and who you need to be connected to, to make it to your destination. You may not take the route that you hope that would take you there, but you will be able to get there. It doesn't have to be the route that you think. There are many ways that you can get to your destination, but some may take longer than others. So choose wisely. Be intentional. Trust God with your life. I'm going to talk about that journey in my next video and how I just knew that I would be okay when I did not get what I thought belonged to me at that point in my life when it came to that position. That's going to be part three. I'm telling y'all, I have so much to share. And I hope that you will subscribe, give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I appreciate you. And I hope that this is helping someone somewhere, you know, keep going after your dreams. Even when you've fallen off or you may fail along the journey, just trust God, give God your life, trust him. Everything's going to work out, but you got to trust him. You got to keep going. You got to put the work in. Faith without works is dead. So we can believe all day long, but if we're not putting in the work, if we're not being committed, if we're not having the discipline to get to where we want to go, we are not going to get there, right? So let's be intentional about our lives and trust God every step of the way. And we will surely, surely we will get there. So I hope to see y'all in part three. Thank you for watching part two and I'll see y'all in part three.